Okay, so my next guest, she started her musical career with uh, somewhat of an advantage by having an ear for music. Uh, she has wowed audience uh, worldwide with her powerful and emotional mezzo-soprano voice. And her life has been a colorful adventure. Uh, she experienced through sound, touch, tears, and laughter, but not through sight. She is the author of Do You Dream in Color? Insights from a Girl Without Sight. It is a fabulous book. You must read it. Please welcome Laurie Rubin. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you so much for having me. It is me. wonderful oh. to have you here. Oh, so much fun. Yay. Okay, first of all, I have to tell you, does she not resemble the young Barbra Streisand? <laughs> Isn't she? Yeah, from like like Funny Girl, kind of that era. Oh, have you ever been told that? Yeah, I feel a very strong connection to Barbara because not only have I been told that my entire life, even when I was skiing, I heard this one guy ski by me really fast, so saying, doggone it, she don't look like Barbara Streisand. But, but <laughs> skiing? You skiing? go skiing? Yeah, I do, yeah. But also, um, I found out later that my dad gave her, a, a friend of hers that he knew uh, mutually, that, um, a CD of mine. And I was so embarrassed. I was like, it was my senior recital. I was like, oh no. But he gave it to her. And months later, my mom called me and said, Lori, I just got a call from this detailing agency. And it turns out that this woman uh, was detailing a black Mercedes and found out about your CD because it was in the CD changer and wants a copy. And when I asked her what was this was all about, she said she was detailing Barbara Streisand. <gasps> Can you believe that? How cool is that? It's so funny. But we've never met. I hope someday to meet her. <laughs> well, I, I saw her not just a few months ago, and, and I will tell her she has to see you. Oh, you're so yeah. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're terrific. Now, you have been blind since birth right, right. uh-huh uh-huh mm -hmm. and what was it what was it like for you you know growing up in a big family because you're you're the only blind person in the family is that correct that's right okay. yeah um, well it was really it was really very positive I had a very happy childhood uh, ever since I was nine months old I was camping in Sequoia or um, the El Capitan Beach uh -huh. <laughs> um, and then when my parents went skiing in Lake Tahoe I would go s snow skiing with them we eventually started skiing the expert slopes and things like that so that never st med they never wanted me to be hindered from that I went water skiing um, and river rafting and all sorts of stuff so like that. they were not very overprotective were they they were like um, let's go for it not 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 as a child no they were they were very they were very uh, wanted me to be daring because they were daring and um, wanted even in my education if they fe felt that anyone was treating me like a blind student they my mom was always in there everybody's like uh oh there's Lori's mom you know <laughs> making sure that I like your mom uh, yeah she was she's really awesome that's great yeah so yeah. so what now I had heard this mm -hmm. Lori your your singing mm -hmm. really started as an accident is that right well, yeah, I, I started taking piano because, you know, every kid takes piano. At, well, <laughs> a lot of kids do. No, and my mother made me take the marimba. It was oh, really awful. Really? It was terrible. I love it, the marimba. That's awesome. <laughs> I sing with marimba a lot, and I love it. But anyway, um, when I was four, I started taking piano lessons. And I, like in typical diva fashion, I never practiced. <laughs> I never practiced. And I would sing along with what the teacher would play for me. So for Elise, even though I wanted to play it, I would just sing along with it. And I never practiced. She finally said to my mom, oh, just have her in voice lessons already. She wants to sing. She doesn't want to play the piano. <laughs> so yeah, and then what, what ended up happening was I, um, I went to see Phantom of the Opera. And my teacher, my voice teacher had me singing pop, because that's sort of like the default for 10-year-olds. Well, you would think everybody would want to sing pop, Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. And then I saw Phantom, and my whole life changed. And I thought, oh, God, I just I want to be Christine. And here, and again, in typical diva fashion, I was having dreams about being her understudy. <laughs> so. so you know, you've done so many things. What? What made you, because I, I, I believe everybody has to have that, that need to want to write a book, because it's an undertaking. Yeah. What did that for you? What was the catalyst? Well, for me, I think I wanted to write this book because um, I wanted people to know that my life was well, in a, in a, and this might sound very anticlimactic, but it's normal because I wanted to live a normal life. You know, I had been set the precedent by my parents, and so I wanted to have a normal career. And I was realizing that what was hindering people from letting me have those opportunities was their preconceived ideas. And so they would get up there and see these, these things that were crippling me that really didn't exist. And so I wanted people to get a voyeuristic mm, view into my life. Yeah, I wanted them to see that I just have a normal life and, and thereby realize that they could just treat me normally. I and think also you're more ambitious than a lot of normal people. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you, 
it, what a, it's such an interesting title your book do you dream in color mm. what mm. what why did you write it that that title well I wanted people to see the paradox there because for me blindness and color are things that two people think don't go in the same sentence they people think that blind people have a very dark life and I've always loved color I make jewelry I cook you know I do all things sorts of you things make that jewelry I do did you make your earrings <laughs> I did I they're did. beautiful oh thank you oh. <laughs> but, I want, I want a pair. Well, it's coming right up. It's coming your way for sure. And yellow too, <laughs> since so you cool. like yellow. Oh yeah. But um, so I think what it was for me is I just, I wanted people to know that if I could dream in color, that people could dream past what they think their limitations are. And so there's the paradox. You can, if I can have this rich, colorful life, you know, so can other people who have what they might perceive as boundaries in their lives. That, see, that, that's very inspirational. It oh. really is. It, <laughs> I know you say that you wanted a normal life and you did everything you could from skiing or whatever. Do people treat you differently because you're blind? They do. I, I, they, they treat me as if I, you know, they have to, uh, you know, treat me with kid gloves sometimes. Especially like high school. Are oh, people... God. Yeah. Oh, that was the worst. I mean, I had kids uh, when I was going to prom uh, and they, the kids came up to me and said, so who's going to take you an escort? And it was really funny because I had the coolest prom date. He was, I mean, he was, <laughs> he's since come out as gay and he's the best dancer. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but you know, I had kids, t you know, telling me that I would never have romance, I would never have friendship. Are you I would... kidding? Yeah, and I have the best life now. I have great friends. I do have romance. I'm getting married this summer, you know, so. That's so <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> So what advice would you give to people, kids especially, to get through all of that? Because you seem to have arrived in a really good place. I would tell them that they need to, to trust the people who love them. It is, it's the most important thing to trust those people because the people who love you are always going to know what's beautiful about you. And, um, mm. and then believe in yourself. Know in yourself because you everybody's instincts are always right. Know what's beautiful about yourself because that's going to help you find your strengths and, and your path. Try to point out your yeah. weaknesses yeah. and things like that. Take it for what it's worth. Lose it. them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know when you're off. You know yeah. when you're on pretty much. I, now, yeah. you're going to perform for us when, you, when we come back, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are going to hear something beautiful, so you got to stay here. Laurie's going to sing for us. <laughs> Coming up, an amazing musical performance by a rising star in the opera world. Welcome back. We are talking to Laurie Rubin, and it is so wonderful to have you on the show. Oh, thanks okay, so much. Okay, so Laurie, tell me about this song. This song was written because when I was in eighth grade, um, I had a friend that I thought of like a big sister, and um, I told her how isolated I felt and that the kids didn't like me and all that. And she said, "You well, you're not going to have a normal life. You're blind, so you're going to live off of welfare. You'll never Isn't that have, awful? you'll never have romance. You'll never have friends. You know, oh, the whole." And it totally just devastated me. But then now I have such a great life, and I thought, you know, there are kids like me, and it's not even about being blind, but kids with any kind of difficulty. And, you know, they, they need somebody to tell them it's going to get better. You need to be a motivational speaker. <laughs> you do. You need to sing and speak. I'd love to. <laughs> now, did you write this song? I wrote the lyrics. And Jenny over here, Jenny wrote... Hi, the... Jenny. Hi. <laughs> she wrote the music. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, well, here to perform her song, The Girl I Am, correct? Yes. All yes. right. <laughs> Laurie Revit. you to myself I wanted to get away but I was trapped inside the words you felt compelled to say you said I'd never share the moonlight that I'd never know romance I'd never know life's rich surprises I'd never have the chance it doesn't take a gun to kill or a knife to cause deep cuts. You could have destroyed me, but bouncing back is what I do best. Don't tell me what I deserve. This is how my life should be. Don't try to shape the girl I am. I thought I had bled dry. 
Anyone should knock you down and take your dreams away. Just get right up and stand up tall, and this is what you say. Don't tell me what I deserve, this is how my life should be. Don't try to shape the girl I am. My skin is made of steel, and you're That is so. Now you have a new CD. It's going to be coming out this fall. It's called also the Girl I Am. And and, yeah. and where can we get it? It'll be available on iTunes, Amazon, you name it. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your place of choice. <laughs> Are you going to be on tour? Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, we'll we'll, uh, we'll try to keep everybody posted where you're going to be. Thank yes. you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having and us. And inspiring so many. Oh, thank uh, you. For more information on Laurie's book too, Do You Dream in Color, which you must read. And her CD of the same is uh, just go to our website. Thank you. Thank we'll you right so back. much. Yay. Coming up, a final thought from Marie.